This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today we're going over the top five causes of mini split failure on air conditioners and heat pumps. And if you want to learn a whole lot about mini splits, make sure to check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. So we have that available over at Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com. Now we're going to get into it. The number one cause of mini split failure is refrigerant leaks. And so if you have a low pressure and low saturated temperature, and a high temperature on the line, that's gonna indicate that you have a very high superheat and that you have a refrigerant leak. And then you, you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to leak search for any uh, possible leaks in the joints. Now, a leaky flare joint could have happened during the initial install. Uh, you could have a problem like that where the technician didn't completely pressure test it well or leak check it with non-corrosive bubble leak detectors. You could have a problem where you have a leaking outdoor coil or leaking indoor coil or you could even have corrosion on the line sets leading to pinhole leaks due to say white insulation breaking down and there's a chemical reaction that occurs. I've done a whole nother video on that and that's linked down in the description section below, um, but that can actually eat away at the line set copper tubing from the outdoor unit to the indoor unit causing the refrigerant to leak out and therefore your air conditioner or heat pump loses the refrigerant and then no longer works. And so that could be the issue. In this case, after you've located a leak, either using an electronic leak detector or non-corrosive bubble leak detector, you're gonna have to recover the full refrigerant charge out of the system in order to then end up fixing the leak. And then you're gonna have to pressure test it, vacuum it. Then you're gonna have to charge the full refrigerant charge back into the system again in order to break the vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle. Cause number two could be from a preventative maintenance problem where you have not cleaned the dust off the back of the coil and that has caused your circuit board to fail because this circuit board is basically upside down inside the cabinet and it needs airflow to cross this little heat exchanger in order to, to cool the circuit board down. So if you have dust, especially back in this top corner here, it can cause your circuit board to fail prematurely. Now this is a printed circuit board. It has the compressor drive in it, the intelligent power module, and the control for the whole system, which is the PCB. This is a IPM, so this is specifically for the fan and compressor. So same thing, this needs to be in the airstream. So if you block the airstream, it's gonna overheat causing the circuit board to fail and the unit to no longer provide air conditioning or heating. Now you could also have a problem at the indoor coil where maybe that blower wheel is clogged completely with biological growth and dust to the point where it can no longer push the correct amount of air across that coil. So that would need to be cleaned in that case. Um, sometimes you can have a lot of say mold or biological growth in there and it's going to cause the system to just basically limp. Uh, it's only going to be running at its lowest capacity, just able to get by, but it's not going to be able to lower the temperature in the building or reduce the humidity enough in the middle of summer. It's not able to produce enough heat in the wintertime. So you're going to need to make sure you clean that. And in order to do that, you can watch a whole other video we have that's linked down in the description section below. And that video covers the blower wheel cleaning, the indoor coil cleaning, and the outdoor coil cleaning. So cleaning the coils on a mini split is not just about gaining more efficiency or gaining more heat transfer, which is a really important part. It also needs to be done just in order for the system to work properly, especially if you have a lot of dust collection. Cause number three is that the circuit board could fail due to a spike in voltage. So you could have uh, some type of a surge of some problem like that. So you wanna install surge protection on the disconnect. Another thing that could cause the main circuit board in the outdoor unit to fail would be say over voltage or under voltage from the power supply. And a way to protect that is to have some type of monitoring system for the old over voltage or under voltage. And so this particular one has surge protection built into it as well uh, in order to be able to protect this. But you also need to remember that surge protectors are only gonna be good for a certain period of time. And so you'll have ones that um, are gonna have the light go off once the surge protector is no longer able to protect it because it's, it's already been used up for its lifetime. Uh, so this is kind of a big deal because we have a lot of dirty power here in the U.S. And so you really want to be protecting these circuit boards by at least adding the surge protection and maybe even that over voltage or under voltage protection. Cause four is something that can just bring the whole mini split system to its knees. It's going to end up not functioning and that is if you have a bad thermistor. So there's at least five thermistors on any type of mini split system and the whole object is that the unit is gonna send electrical current through each one of these thermistors in order to measure temperature at the various locations. 
So the little bead thermistor might be used to measure air temperature uh, at the inlet of the outdoor coil or at the inlet of the indoor coil. And the tube thermistors are typically used to measure the tube temperature of the, the outdoor coil, the indoor coil, and also right here on the discharge of the compressor. So these will change in electrical resistance as the temperature changes. And so you can check the calibration of this with the power off uh, by measuring electrical resistance. And so you're gonna compare that to the actual temperature that it is surrounding the thermistor when you're measuring it. And so there should be a troubleshooting chart supplied by the manufacturer in order to check the calibration. Uh, but if you ever measure OL, then that means that your thermistor is bad and that's opened up say, the wire is either cut or the thermistor inside is bad and open and that would basically stop the mini split from operating and it's a very inexpensive small part you just got to make sure to replace it with the correct size thermistor so for instance these come in 5k 10k 15k 20k and 50k and what that means is if you measure the electrical resistance at say 77 degrees and you measure 10,000 ohms or 10k ohm then that will be a 10K ohm thermistor. And so there's different types, the bead type and the tube type. And so you're just going to want to uh, be able to troubleshoot these with the power off to the system. And uh, that could be the issue right there. Now, the other thing is the indoor unit could throw an error code letting you know that this is the problem. So that's, that is kind of nice as well. So some diagnostic functions of a mini split might be able to tell you what the problem is. Cause five is if a technician accidentally overcharges an inverter mini split unit. So during air conditioning mode, they might try to measure superheat over here uh, on the vapor line or try to measure subcoiling. Unfortunately, because of where the metering device is in these mini split systems, you can't measure subcoiling properly. The other thing is superheat is always gonna be changing based on the circuit board powering the inverter compressor and also the fan. So it's gonna be adjusting the speed of the compressor, the speed of the fan, and also the speed of the indoor fan, as well as the position of the metering device. So if you're trying to add refrigerant based on the superheat you're measuring out here, which is the pressure converted to saturated temperature and the line temperature, you could accidentally end up overcharging the accumulator right before the compressor with too much refrigerant to where it ends up going into those tubes. And if you have liquid entering into those tubes and going into the compressor, you're gonna end up damaging the actual compression section in that compressor. So in this case, you can see there's a larger accumulator tube, but you could accidentally overcharge this system uh, just by trying to check the charge while the inverter system's running. And so you're going to need to do any refrigerant adjustments in these with the power off just with the total weight method. So you're using the cumulative line set length in order to determine how much refrigerant that you're going to want to add into this system. So I hope this video helped you understand more about mini splits. And if you want to learn more about the electrical side, the refrigerant side, the troubleshooting of these systems and multi-zone systems, make sure to check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. So we've got tons of content. We've got 470 custom images in here. So make sure you, you learn about this. And we also have a 1300 question workbook that goes along with this as well. So you can check both of these out over at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. And hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.